Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for August 16th, 2019. It's Friday. Yay, it's Friday. What a tremendous week of volatility that we have experienced here. Um, just lots of lots of market questions and very few answers have created tremendous volatility. We don't know if um, we're going to get an FOMC rate cut. No clarity there. We don't know if uh, this global slowdown is going to affect the rest of our markets. Uh, our, our market, um, leaving lots of questions. We don't know if the bond markets are going to finally stabilize and a hold up or if those inversions are going to create a problem. We don't know if we're going to see any progress on trade, um, the trade war with China. There's, there's just so many things that are creating lots and lots of uncertainty in the market. And consequently, um, we're getting pretty volatile price action as a result. Now, we had um, right at the end of the day yesterday, bond um, bond yields began to stabilize just a little bit, and we did finally rally up and get a little bit of relief at the end of the day. If you take a look at a shorter term chart, you see we had that dive down here um, late in the session as those bond yields really started to slip, but then that rally came back into play as they started to moderate a little bit right there toward the end of the session and bringing us right back up. Now this morning, we, we have a very happy market. We had a good round of earnings last night after the bell and um, those bond um, rates seem to have stabilized somewhat overnight. And so we've got a nice rally looking a um, uh, big gap up that we're looking at here in the market right now dow is expected to gap up more than 200 points the question all traders probably have on their mind with the volatility that we have in this market is can we trust it um, just remember this big pop and rally that completely reversed and so <laughs> Can we tr trust this move and, and is it going to be sustainable? And that is the major question that we're all going to have to decide this morning. Is this the market low or is this just the next um, next volatile move back up before we continue this um the downtrend that we are currently have in the market. And I wish I could tell you the answer to that. I really don't know. What I will show you is what the market or what the technicals of the chart could um, reveal to us. So first off, gapping up this morning um, up in here, we certainly have the possibility of those bond yields again start to waver if there's more news that comes out in the market. Um, we could certainly see a pop and drop. Now that pop and drop is where we gap up in the morning and find nothing but sellers pushing it back down. And we have to question, um, you know, how much risk are traders willing to pick up as we head into kind of an uncertain weekend where all of these questions are still pending. Will they be able to, will there be enough to hold that up throughout the day? Interesting question to ponder. What I'm going to have to do before I make any trade decisions is I'm going to have to make sure that we actually get some follow through buying after this morning pop that we actually see, um, buyers stepping in, not just institutions popping this in the early morning. Let's take a look at what we have going here in resistance though. We we talked about the failure of those two candles right there and how, what trouble that would create and it certainly created some trouble there. Now we're moving back up. We want to watch those two, the bottoms of those two candles as that potential resistance place, that place where we could just slam in into that resistance and fail. And if we happen to breach above there, let's keep in mind this fairly significant resistance level across here in the chart is just right above. So lots of resistance that we're going to have to get through um, 
to really honestly improve the condition of the market. So a lot of work has to be done here if we're going to rally. If we can get through there, if we can hold above there, if they can set off a short squeeze today, you know, with this big gap up, and that short squeeze would be something to the effect of lots of short traders would be forced to cover their trades if um, they can push this hard enough to the upside. If that occurs, then we still have to deal with this resistance level right in here in the chart and those diving moving averages. We have our 50 day moving average up here, providing that resistance, our shorter term averages diving down. Now here in the Dow, we certainly have that great possibility of this double bottom uh, being formed around the 200 day moving average. But unfortunately that doesn't translate over to the SPY. And yesterday I, I honestly, and I was really kind of rooting for the idea that we would um, catch some additional selling and push this down into, um, into that 200 day moving average, um, on the SPY so we could kind of flush this out and kind of complete this move. Now with this volatility that we're seeing, this uncertainty, we're going to bounce back up here into this level of resistance. We're going to test up in here and not completing this move down here. Now this certainly could be that double bottom in the SPY. There's no doubt about that. But markets typically don't like to float out there in midair for a long time. And as you can see right over here, how this worked out um, uh, down around that 200 day moving average. So I still kind of um, am watching this closely. We could still reach that move um, here eventually uh, to the downside. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. This resistance right in here is, uh, is something we're going to have to focus on this morning and if we happen to break through up into there um, just remember we've got our 50-day moving averages our shorter term moving averages crossing down providing a pretty significant level of resistance and then of course we do have a downtrend here in the market that we have to breach we have to deal with as resistance as we move back up Let's take a look at uh, the NASDAQ. Now the NASDAQ has held up much, much better and the NASDAQ could be that index that really leads us out of this uh, bearishness. But once again, here we are floating kind of in mid air. And as you saw, see right here, um, we could certainly see further selling um, in the future here, testing that 200 day moving average before this is complete. However, what we're seeing here in the queues could also provide that assistance to rally us up. This will technically be a higher low in the, in the NASDAQ and a push back up in here toward these resistance levels in the chart are going to be really, really important. Um, the NASDAQ, it is possible, can lift us right out of, um, uh, these markets and with uh, good earnings from Nvidia yesterday, um, you know, not surprising that we're seeing a pop here um, in uh, the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at IWM. That poor IWM uh, <laughs> holding on to this price support, but just barely at the end of the day. And you, as you can see, gapping up a little bit this morning, but there's certainly nothing impressive going on here in IWM. And IWM is really very, very sick. Um, has a lot of work to do. This overall downtrend um, ha has a lot of work before that can be breached and uh, trouble here in, in those poor small caps. So we'll have to keep an eye on those. Um, they, they're just kind of serving like an anchor. We're just dragging them around right now, um, trying to lift them up off, off the bottom of the ocean here. Let's take a look at the VIX. And that VIX has been, you know, pretty frustrating um, to watch. A lot of volatility, a lot of fear in the market. And we started to really push that fear up yesterday. But then um, those bond yields started to moderate. 
and um, we drop that fear right back down in that late afternoon rally. So here's here's our scenario. We're, we're still holding above this downtrend. We're still in an uptrend here on uh, the VIX, showing that fear in here. But this morning's big move is likely to bring um, us back down toward these lower levels in here. Um, if the, the buying really holds throughout the day, could bring us right back down into this area. So as long as we hold above these levels of support, hold above this downtrend, we have to be concerned that fear could come back into the market anytime spiking is back up. So let's watch that carefully. We want to see this break on back down and have that fear drop out of the market. But since really nothing has changed, we still have all of those questions that I brought up earlier that have to be dealt with. Um, it's really hard for me to say or, or believe that we're just going to rise all the way back up with those questions still in, out there circulating around what's going to happen next. And that's what is bringing that fear into the market. Let's take a look at um, T2122, which was our best real indicator yesterday that we were in that oversold condition. We were down here in this bullish reversal zone and that a rally um, uh, should be forthcoming. Well, unfortunately, the, the volatility of this market, we're in, most folks aren't going to get a chance to participate in this move because we're going to gap up. Now, the question is, how far do we gap and how far do we move up here in our T2122 all at once? Um, and we've seen how those big excessive moves like we had earlier this week um, just really don't play very well in the market. And so when we get those big volatile pop-up moves, we have to watch those closely for that potential. We stretch that out too far too fast and then we come right back down. So kind of keep that in mind. T2122 telling us we should get that relief rally. But since we're gapping so big this morning, um, who knows how long that relief rally can actually hold. Let's take a look at... Um, our economic calendar today. Not much on our economic calendar today except for the housing starts. Housing starts going to be pretty important here at 8.30 a.m. As we know, that can really move the market around um, if there is a surprise or something in that number. Also, um, we have consumer sentiment. Not as likely to move the market around, but certainly something we, we, we would want to pay attention to for today. On the earnings front, we have a nice little um, rest, I guess, in the earnings calendar, dropping down in the number of earnings, but there's still some key earnings out there this morning and things we want to pay attention to. For example, um, uh, John Deere being one of the most notable for today. Um, looks like, well, it's just kind of floating here. Uh, must not have reported yet. And um, we'll want to watch that. That will certainly have an effect on the overall market. So uh, keep an eye on that. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day. I want to wish you great profits. Hopefully you're already long and are picking up some of this big move this morning. I would really caution you to be a little bit careful about chasing into this move just in case we get that pop and drop. That's where we gap up in the morning and then see sellers coming back in uh, to, to that move. So watch that carefully and focus carefully on that price action this, mor this morning without getting caught up in that uh, fear of missing out trade and rushing in uh, to a gap. And um, also, really seriously consider how much risk you want to carry into this weekend, um, considering all the uncertainty and all the things that could, um, uh, well, we could possibly clarify or we could add more uncertainty in this weekend, creating uh, additional volatility uh, that could be pretty rough um, on your charts so, um, and, or your holdings. So with that, um, if this is the first time you've seen these videos and you find these videos to be helpful, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube and then click those that bell icon when it pops up. 
also, if you feel the video is worthy of, of a thumbs up, please click that thumbs up and leave a brief comment. You don't have to do anything fancy in the comment. And by the way, if you do leave a nice long comment, I truly appreciate those. You guys taking the time to do that means the world to me. Um, and um, I truly, truly uh, want to thank you for that, uh, for those who do take the time to leave those comments. You guys are awesome. Um, always feel free to share these videos with any friends and family, post them on Facebook or Twitter, um, wherever you might post social media. Um, uh, feel free to do that at any time with any of the videos here on the YouTube channel. So let's take a look at some stocks that are still showing some signs of, 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 of strength um, and some sh showing a little bit of weakness and possible shorting patterns. But um, be really, really careful um, about adding too many trades um, here over the next uh, few days because of that volatility. One of the stocks I want to bring to your attention is this BLL. BLL has just been it's through this entire uh, market pullback and yuckiness and stuff like that. Um, this is not necessarily a, a, a stock to just buy today. Um, in fact, none of the stocks that I point out here are going to be a recommendation to buy or sell any security. These are more of a study chart. And one of the reasons I'm showing this chart is just to show you that when it's all, when there's just gloom and doom hanging over the market and everything seems to be um, awful, you can still find trending star stocks, stocks that are holding up very, very well. And as you can see, BLL has just absolutely ignored all this volatility in the market, holding up really well in its trend. And if we take a look at this uh, nice little trend that we've got going on here, maybe a little rest or consolidation is due here. Moving this over toward um, its trend. And then this has great opportunity still for upside. Uh, very, very clean uh, price action in here. Very deliberate, looking very strong. Continues to hold up quite well overall. Take a look at Starbucks. Starbucks still hanging in here, holding that trend has really had no effect um, in this market, really trying to uh, push it down, holding up quite strongly and looking pretty good overall. Um, might be worth keeping this one on your watch list. Take a look at Coca-Cola. Coke making a nice move yesterday, moving on up, and it looks like it wants to gap up a little bit this morning with this bullishness in the market. Now, there is price resistance in this chart that we have to consider, um, but I want you to notice this pattern that we've formed here. This is actually an inverted head and shoulders pattern that would suggest more highs could be coming in coke so keep an eye on that that's a pretty interesting pattern up here and this has largely ignored the big sell-off here in the market it's a consumer defensive so those tend to do pretty well in uncertain markets take a look at another consumer defensive like hershey hershey holding up very very well holding this new little trend that it's got going on in here um, this has just moved up and up and up and up and up this year, continues to hold up well, and once again, pretty much ignoring um, all of this turmoil in the market and just acting like it wants to go up. So um, one of the things that I tend to do in uh, times of market turmoil like this is I turn to some of these old, boring companies um, like Hershey and Coca-Cola and things like that, where people have just kind of forgot about them. Um, it's where you can get these really nice sustained trends. You avoid the volatility um, of the market and they just hold up quite well. Um, some short ideas. Let's take a look at Lulu. Now, Lulu, I think, has probably reached the end of its initial short here. We talked about this one earlier this week, and that certainly played out very well. Um, if you watch like the Monday or Tuesday video, I mentioned Lulu as a potential short. Played out really, really well in that 
uh, situation. But now we've kind of caught a little bit of price support in here, possibly that little bit of a double bottom in here. But that doesn't change the fact that this is downtrending. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to keep an eye here on Lulu. If this does move up into this area, watch for that next shorting opportunity to come along. Another thing that is possible, even though we've kind of got this little W bottom, is we could fail right through here, putting that um, um, resistance above us then and um, opportunity for downside move. So Lulu not looking so healthy here, um, at least at the moment. Let's take a look at a stock like Dollar General. Now this one is kind of interesting. It's just kind of battling right around this 50 day moving average. But yesterday looked like it was starting to lose that battle just a little bit. And this is that blue ice failure pattern that is one of my favorite shorting patterns where we fail through the 50, rally back up, test at resistance, and then fail. And so still looking at Dollar General is as um, a relatively weak stock here right now and that has the potential for continuing to fail on lower. Those retail uh, stocks seeming to, seemingly having difficulty right now in the market, and that may also provide some pressure here on um, Dollar General. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day. I want to wish you an awesome, awesome weekend. Um, I, thank you to everyone who does take the time to subscribe and leave those comments. You guys are, you're, you're the best. I, I truly, truly am thankful to you guys. Um, and uh, honestly, it's just, it's so humbling when you guys take the time to watch these videos, uh, and, and then uh, follow through with those comments. Um, truly appreciate it. Everyone take care. I want to wish you a great weekend and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. Have a good one.